Every year, the Red Arrows spend two months in Cyprus on exercise Springhawk. It's their final training before their summer display season, before they take off around the world. And their Hawk jets won't be still for long. RAF Akrotiri is the Red Arrows' second home. They're a big part of station life, and everyone knows that when they're here, the skies will be filled with colour for weeks. This year, they touch down on the 1st of April, ready to start their preparations for a very important anniversary year. It's 50 years since the Royal Air Force aerobatic team first started, and everyone wants to make sure this is a year to remember. The primary focus of us being out here is to fly three times a day, is to get the final polish on the display ready for the display season. We've got a fairly standard routine, about 20 minutes long, a, a first half of choreographed formation shapes with all nine aircraft, splitting into the second half, which is a bit more dynamic. I brought back a few manoeuvres that haven't been done for a while. Essentially, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a pretty normal Red Arrows display, um, as exciting and dynamic as we can, we can get it. To mark the anniversary, the Red Arrows Hawk T1 jet has a new tail fin design which was unveiled at their home at RAF Scampton in February. But there's also been some changes up in the air as well. Along with their detonator, carousel and slingshot moves, they've added an old favourite to the repertoire, the palm split. Soaring through the skies, stopping people in their tracks, they were sent to the hand. Every day on exercise is a busy one, but for the pilots, the working day normally starts in the office. Arriving one by one, the whole team gather for a meeting to outline the weather and flight times for the day before their first brief. They carry out three sorties a day, and before each one, they talk through their manoeuvres bit by bit. Flight Lieutenant Stuart Campbell is in his first year with the team. He started flying with the Reds in October, learning all the moves from scratch. Complete highs and lows, really. So absolute euphoria getting into the team is fantastic. In the first couple of weeks, obviously, with the team, we're just uh, over the moon. It didn't seem real. Uh, and then the reality of actually having to perform the job kind of kicked in. So pretty hard winter training, to be honest, and some pretty low times. Uh, but we've come through the other side and, and everything's brilliant again. Really looking forward to it. Straight from the brief, the pilots head to the squippers to get kitted up for the flight. With the loops, climbs and spins they've got lined up, they could face a G-force of up to 7G. So they all wear special trousers to counteract the effects and stop themselves blacking out. Picking up their special helmets, oxygen mask and life jacket, it's then down to the flight line for their first takeoff. Each pilot normally does three years on the team. Flight Lieutenant Mike Child is in his final year as Red 9. With the team, it's just been three of the best years of my life. With 2012, uh, some of the stuff we did that year, especially with the Olympics opening ceremony uh, and the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, that was just stuff that I will always remember. And this season, again in particular, with the 50th display season, it's something that I'll always be able to look back on. Up in the air, the pilots reach speeds of up to 400 miles an hour. As they soar over the Akrotiri Peninsula, some of their formations leave them just six feet apart. My face above the water My feet can't touch the ground Touch the ground and it feels like I can see the sands on the horizon at time You are not around I'm slowly drifting Reds 1 to 5 form the front section. Reds 6 to 9 take on a more dynamic role at the back. Two of them are known as the synchro pair, flying just 100 feet from the ground. We aim to pass at 100 feet um, with a closure rate of about 800 miles an hour. Um, but we, we don't start at 100 feet, clearly. We, we start off wider than that and then get closer and closer until, until we can get an eye, or certainly I can get an eye for 100 feet. Uh, in the position of Red 7 as Synchro 2, it's my job to avoid the leader. So it's me that sets up the pass distance of 100 feet. So I've got to get it right. Depending on the weather conditions, they will fly a flat, rolling or looping display and they can switch mid-flight if conditions change on the day. Red 10 squadron leader Mike Ling watches every one. 
I'm the, the ground supervisor essentially, so I have to be on the ground at every single public performance to make sure that the display site is safe, that there are no big flocks of birds, intruding aircraft, whether any big ships come into the arena. I just need to warn Red One on the radio. The Aquaturi Peninsula is fantastic for our training for our summer. The majority of our displays in the summer are coastal sites, the British summer, you know, seaside festivals, and um, that's, that's what we're training for. Coming here, we've got about six different locations. They're all coastal, so it's perfect training, and it gives us a good opportunity to get used to that for when we arrive in Bournemouth, for example. Their days are busy and the pressure on them is immense, but being a Red Arrow is a job many pilots would love to have. Every year, hopefuls try out for the team to replace those in their final year, and the assessment takes place in Cyprus, in what's known as Shortlist Week. They face interviews and flying tests. Some have had to come from Afghanistan to take part, others straight from squadrons in the UK, but they've all had at least one and a half thousand flying hours experience. There were nine pilots on the shortlist this year, competing for three places on the team. It's a childhood dream and you know, even just growing up wanting to join the Air Force, the, you know, this is the, the face of the Air Force you see at all the air shows throughout the summer. And you dream of that and then once you get in the Air Force, you, know, you then go on and I was lucky enough to then go on and fly jets anyway and then get onto a Typhoon squadron. So you know, to then have the opportunity to come apply for the Red Arrows and then be selected and spend a week with them here to try and get a job, yeah, just fantastic. It's been a great week. It's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, just coming out with uh, nine like-minded individuals and, and hanging out with the team and the engineers has just been a fantastic experience. Many of the shortlist already know each other and they form a close bond quickly, even trying to distract each other during our interviews. Their acrobatic skills may be good on the ground, but the real test is up in the air and many of the current team still remember how tough it was. Yeah, very much so. I felt for them all. Um, I, I've been there twice, I didn't get in the first time, um, so I know how the guys will feel who didn't get in and I know how excited the guys will be who got in. Uh, they all did incredibly well and uh, I hope some of those who didn't come back next year. Pilots have three attempts to make it through selection and the decision is never easy. The Red Arrows are a close team with a relentless display programme ahead, so it's important they pick the right pilots to join them. But they're not the only important part of the Red Arrows team. Behind the scenes, there's a large group of engineers keeping the show running. There are 50 maintenance mechanics, avionics technicians and mechanical engineers on exercise with the Red Arrows, and it's their task to keep the jets in service round the clock. The challenge for the guys uh, on the team is really down to the tempo and the cadence of the activity. So, you know, we have a very compressed uh, time frame between the sorties. Uh, it's sufficient time for us to be able to do all the work that we need, but there's very little slack within that. Uh, so it's making sure that all the activity is coordinated, uh, is punctual, is on time, is safe. Before and after every flight, the jets are inspected and everything is logged. The pilots note down any issues and the maintenance checks are carried out. There's an engineer assigned to every jet. Collectively, they're called the circus. They're all from different trades and it's their job to follow the jets everywhere they go. This side is chicken, giving everything a wipe down and not looking for any marks, crocs and things, loose fasteners along here. The circus fly in the back seat of the Hawk to every display location, so they're on hand whenever they're needed. Corporal Nicky Cunningham is on his second year with the Reds, working as Circus 4 alongside pilot Flight Lieutenant Ollie Parr. Oh, it's unbelievable. It, it, words, words can't describe it. Like, it's like a dream come true for well, everyone, really. It's a, one of the best jobs you can do in the rough. It's quite, you have to be quite dynamic and quite quick to deal with the situations that arrive. Once you land, I mean, it could be different kind of issues, you know, when radios might be broken or might have a hydro leak, so we maybe just help each other out just to get through it so the jets can get up in there and make the display. Some are much newer to the team. SAC Tom Lowe is the youngest at 21 years old. He joined the Red Arrows just 18 months into his RAF career. Oh yeah, it's amazing, yeah, pretty good man. Um, it's probably be a highlight of my career as well, so I've just got to make the most of it this year. The Hawk T1 jet has been used by the Reds since 1979 and it's been specially adapted for the role. There's a smoke generation system on board to give the red, white and blue we see in the skies and a special team to make sure there's smoke on standby for every flight. Arriving in their silver chemical suits, the dye team provide the colour for every display, filling up the tanks one by one. Bumping red! Pumping blue! 
With their heads close by, they're listening to make sure each one is full. We top up the rig with concentrated dye and then fill the rig up with diesel. That mixes inside and then when we actually deliver it to the aircraft, it's that dye-diesel mix for the both red and blue, whereas the white is just a pure diesel, that's it. The jets will have seven minutes of smoke, five minutes of white and one minute each of blue and red. A quick refuel, some final checks and then it's time for takeoff. The circus guide each jet out in order, then it's over to the pilots to do the rest. But there's only a short time until they'll be back and their working day begins again. It's a constant task keeping the jets in flight, but it's thanks to this team that the Red Arrows are able to fly far and wide. But before they start their display season, they need to pass their final assessment to earn their public display authority for the year. It's a tense day for everyone. The Deputy Commander Operations and AOC 22 Training Group have flown out from the UK to give them the final thumbs up. They've done exceptionally well. Display authority is not based just on today. It's, it's based on six months of assessment of the whole team and not just the air crew, of course, it is the ground crew as well. Just as important that we assess their performance and their ability to perform professionally as well as integrate with the public. And uh, uh, in terms of what I've been looking for, it's three things probably. Consistency in the display, the fact that they are demonstrating the excellence that the Red Arrows stand for and the third thing, of course, is safety, which is absolutely paramount. When they arrive out on the pan with their public display authority granted and their red flying suits for the season, it's the moment they've all been waiting for. The whole team can now celebrate months of hard work and training. It's, uh, it's a great feeling actually. I know it's our third, my third um, opportunity here, but it's, it's still, the novelty doesn't wear off. It's fantastic. The public display authority marks the start of their season, but it also marks the end of exercise Springhawk and their time in Cyprus. The training is over. Soon they'll be flying in front of huge crowds everywhere they go. This year, the team are set to perform 85 displays in nine different countries. So a busy summer awaits.